Hello, this is the Greater Lagos Vision and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedokun. Since assumption of office in May 2019, Governor Babajide Sawunlu has maintained his commitment to ensuring safe mobility of residents and ease of doing business in the state. This was demonstrated through the official launch of a security-fitted apparatus, safe, comfortable and modernized taxi scheme codenamed Lagride, with a rollout of the first batch of 1,000 brand new GSC automobiles at the State House in Alausa, Ikeja. The Ride Hailing Taxi Initiative, which has been operated on a lease-to-owned basis, is a component of the state government's multimodal transportation blueprint, being executed under the traffic management and transportation pillar of the themes agenda of the Sowolu administration. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. Welcome once again. I'm Lovi Kuku Oyedoku. This episode features infrastructure, Sawolu so State's commitment to ensuring seamless mobility to deploy technology for enhanced movements. Transportation, Lagos State sets to host Medi National Transport Technology Conference. Lagos Blue Line Rail, Sawolu so says project will be electrified once vendors to stay away. Any city without a fully functional infrastructural system will suffer a setback, as such engineers must be well trained in order to bring to bear their professional attributes to the growth of the nation. From an infrastructural perspective, the managing director of Lagos Metropolitan Transport Authority, Lamata, engineer Abimbola Akinaju, stated this during her presentation at the 2022 alumni luncheon of the University of Lagos Faculty of Engineering Alumni Association in Lagos. It was a reunion, a veritable networking opportunity for the alumni of the Faculty of Engineering, University of Lagos. It was also an avenue to give back to their alma mater through the launching of a 500 million naira fundraising project for the faculty. Away from that, Governor Babajide Sawunlu and her team cashed in on the opportunity provided by the reunion to tell the impact of the alumni on the state's infrastructural development in less than three years. And so the blue line you can see is a massive feat of engineering. And I'm sure all of you need to be proud of it. For four legs, we changed the design to 10 legs. So we took a massive right of way to do 10 legs, and we were very smart to keep a rail corridor in the middle of it. So the, the alignment actually is about 16 legs, because when you've done 10 legs, and you still have enough alignment to keep a rail you know, corridor, you know, was a main fit. You know, and that's why we're able to, you know, preserve, and which was the most a difficult option to take. But because we were committed at that time to say, you know what, let's have the audacity to want to do it. And that's why, you know, we started it. The four stations, now two, Alaba is done one, National Theater, they're completed. You will notice that now two and Alaba, they have two concourses. Obviously, that's based on study. Uh, studies that had been done to determine sort of uh, ridership that we would get and we realized that, and, I mean it's, it's, it's obvious, Maltu is a market area so there's a lot of people there so that's why we have two compasses that allows us to take on more passengers it's the same thing in Igomo, uh, sorry, same thing in Alaba Igomo and National Theatre are also completed we have 
pedestrian bridges at each of those stations that allows us to bring passengers from one side of the expressway to the managing director of Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Lamata, spoke with journalists on the sideline of the event. Infrastructure is owned by all. So it means that as an individual, you have a responsibility. Something has been built not to destroy it, not to vandalize it. And so therefore, people also need to be aware and also take ownership. And that's what I always say. If something belongs to you, you are not likely to go and destroy it. She also told the forum that over 5,000 people affected by the construction of the rail have been compensated by the legal state government. The Lagos Blue Line Rail on completion will be running on electric tracks with electric motor vehicle EMV and as such citizens have been warned to keep off the train lines. Handed down this warning shortly after inspecting the Blue Line Rail, the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu assured Lagosians that the completion date of the two rail projects remains. <laughs> The train took off from the National Theatre Igomo to Orile, Suru Alaba, Mile 2, and back to the Marina Axis of the state, having Governor Babajide Sawunlu, some members of his cabinet, officials of the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Lamata, and contractors handling the project on board. The governor inspected the ongoing works on the Blue Line Ray project and stations and a new four-coach train, which according to him, is a typical train that will be used on the Blue Line. He expressed satisfaction at the pace of work, maintaining that the project will be delivered on schedule. So Wolu was unhappy at the level of vandalism along the rail corridors and warned perpetrators to desist from such acts. They are electric trucks. To be running on electric, on electricity, and you will know that citizens or passengers or anybody whatsoever cannot walk on those things. Right? So, gentlemen of the press, you will have that responsibility from now. We we'll begin to mention that for the next six months, eight months, we begin to mention that that this track is not like the red line. The red line is DMU, but the blue line is EMU. So, these are some of the communications that we need to begin to pass out, and they are electric train lines. The governor also assured that adequate security will be put in place at every station and platform with the use of CCTV. He disclosed that the state was set to bring in from China additional two sets of four train coaches by September and October. The additional trains that were procured for the blue line were going to be going to China when they open up, maybe in May or June. You know, when it's, it's completely completed, just to um, um, have a look and, you know, send it on shipment to probably get to the country before September, October. So based on the promises we gave you at the beginning of the year, um, we are still on track at both the red line and the blue line. <laughs> Recently, the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu unveiled the first batch of 1,000 brand new GSE branded vehicles, otherwise known as Lag Ride. This, for sure, is another step forward in the state government's drive to develop an efficient transportation model in tune with modernity and comfort. According to Sawunlu, there's no plan to run existing hailing ride operators out of business, but to offer safer alternatives and clear the roads of rickety cars used for taxi business. Joining me in this episode is the National President, e hailing Drivers and Private Owners Association of Nigeria, Comrade Idris Shonuga, for more insight into the scheme. <laughs> Sir, 
Thank you so much, Comrade Idris Shonuga, for joining us today on the Great Alicos Vision. Thank you. Right, you are the president of uh, uh, the national president, professional e-healing drivers and private owners association of Nigeria. Tell us, in Lagos State, um, uh, the Lagos State government just uh, introduced recently the lag rise, Lagos ride. Tell us exactly how has it been? How have your members been faring since the introduction? Thank you. Uh, our members are very happy. They are very happy in the sense that the business of a Lagos ride is going to add value to their collective existence. In the sense that they are going to be using the brand new vehicles to run their transport service on that Lagos ride. Unlike before, that they use old vehicles, popularly known to Kumbo, even Nigerian old used car, to run taxi business, which in different cases develop fault at the middle of roads. It's almost impossible to maintain those vehicles, you know. But the added advantage with the got right introduction is maintaining of those vehicles for the drivers who are beneficiaries. You see, running a transport business has been, has been very difficult in terms of maintenance of the vehicles because you are always on the road on a daily basis. And we don't have a good mechanic system in Nigeria. So majority of drivers patronized the road mechanics, dealing with all manners of spare part dealers, getting wrong uh, spare parts to fix their car. At times, they spend double amount to repair, to repair the cars. And it's eating hard on them. But with the introduction of Lagos Stride, that comes with mechanical insurance, where the vehicle will be maintained for them for the period of four years, where the contract is between them and the Bile Odins, who is going to manage the operation of that business. It's a welcome development. So when we heard about this scheme that has been launched, and it concerns our industry, because the vehicle will be operated with an uh, with, uh, algorithm. It's an online approach, unlike conventional way of transportation before where you have to flag down. It's online and we are e-ailers. So we approach the Ministry of Transportation that the Lagos State Government cannot launch such a laudable scheme without giving the practitioner the sense of belonging, because we are e-ailers, we have thousands of trip history on Uber and boat, and we are, we, are, we are professionals, so we need to get involved. So we apply, and the ministry directs us to the appropriate body that is going to pilot the legal stride, which is the Bill Holdings. So we met the MD, and we, we had to ask to write a proposal we did not lobby. First of all, as a body, they, they, they deal with body, they deal with individuals from the conversation. We approach them as a body. Then I think when, uh, when I met the MD of Ibile Holdings, it made us to understand that the associations the individuals, the Goshens who are interested in this thing can apply. Uh, we apply as an association. Okay. Yes, and then the procedure is like every other person. The requirement. The requirement to be a beneficiary of lag ride is uniform. 20% equity contribution of the asset of 7.5 million. The interest of 10% for the period of four years. You have the equity, you have the down payment of 1.8 million, which we see uh, is always, it will be very impossible for our member, ordinary healing drivers to benefit from this scheme. 
with such amount because it's, it is so huge for e-hailing drivers to to sum up 1.8 million as a deposit. It means the ordinary person cannot be partaker of this scheme. So we appeal that is there any other way? And they, they gave us two banks, FCMB and Polaris Bank, precisely, to, to, to give us loan. And they came up with corporate guarantee on behalf of the association for our member to be a beneficiary. The Polaris Bank will borrow our members, they said 1.8 million. You understand? Why are we standing for them? You understand? So, and our member has been applying. But besides, we, the individual members, also need to have some starting contribution from that 1.8 million, 20% equity contribution of 1.8 million, which is uh, uh, around 300,000. And we have employed our drivers, advised them to key into this because it's going to make life better for them. Then the most interesting part of it that makes us to subscribe to Lagos Right is that what, what the union stands for is workers' rights, the workers' welfare. Because we notice that the government has been less concerned on the informal sector. Because our interest is in the informal sector. The e healing drivers fall into, in, in the informal sectors. And the informal sector has been neglected for a long time. A lot, some certain benefit workers' rights has been denied, such as HMO pension pl scheme, plan, have, uh, opportunity to have cooperatives, then perhaps mortgage plan. These are set of worker that solve problem of transportation in the state, moving passenger from one point to another point with expected professional service. They need to be taken care of. But to my dismay, all this thing has been embedded in Lagos Tribe business scheme. Because our own concerns is that what are the provisions for the drivers that, is going, that are going to drive this business? And we're made to understand that 1.5% commission has been set aside for the driver and, the, and their family of four. Which is what we, HMO. HMO, Health Management Scheme under the plan, you see, when they charge 25% commission of each transaction consummated under the platform, 4% out of it goes into comprehensive insurance and mechanic insurance to maintain that vehicles, which, is, which I see as a welcome development. It wasn't anywhere included in their current module of operandi with other hub companies. And if Lagos State government put this in their business plan, I think, you know, they are coupling international standard practice, which is why we uh, are very happy with Lagos State government, particularly Bajeson Songulu, for making sure that all these things are embedded in Lagos right. With the notion of Lagos right, when we had meeting with them, if they follow all the process to the letter, I think it will reduce traffic congestion in Lagos State because they are the first app companies that we introduce what we call carpooling. Carpooling means classification of rider where two, three, four different customers can join one vehicle going towards the same destination. And with the introduction of, of brand new comfortable vehicles, I think a lot of Lagosians will keep their vehicle at home. What prompted the love of Lagosians to make use of their vehicle are because we don't have a good, safe transport system. That is why everybody wants to have their vehicle on the road. And judging from the fact that we have less road and we have many people in the city, we are moving at the same time. But if we have a safe system, 
safe transport system, comfortable safe, safe transport system, a lot of people will keep their vehicle at home and make use of Lagos ride. What am I saying? With the introduction of this classification of rider, they will even pay less. They will pay less than the conventional taxi, where you used to pay one, two thousand naira, you can pay less than one thousand five hundred, even one thousand, because you are sharing your ride with other customers, other users. Meaning that the driver will end up any more. You know, in the sense that they were supposed to have earned 2005, and they collect 1,300 or 1,200 into four places, is get, getting 5,000 instead of 2,500. And the same discount, distance cover when you pick only one person. You know, that will reduce a lot of traffic, traffic congestion if we can actually accept this concept introduced by Lagos right, you know, the, the traffic will be entirely reduced. But if Lagos right deploy a no vehicle, the 1,000 vehicle is not enough. I must be sincere with you. If we have more than this vehicle, handing over to those who needed job opportunity to, to pilot it, a lot of Lagosians will keep their vehicle at home and will make use of Lagos right. Lagos ride can enter anywhere in the street of Lagos State because the majority of these vehicles are SUV. They can enter some bad area. And we have sampled it. You understand? It is not low vehicle, it's high on the ground. They can maneuver some bad spot. I see it as a solution. If it's being piloted appropriately, Online transport system is already a smart system way of transportation. Coupled with a lot of uh, mechanism being embedded in it to make transportation easy. S using a stone to kill two to three beds. Number one, the lag ride is not going to be conventional taxi. You take request, the, the driver take request randomly, you know, and it solves the problem of moving within the city. Two, three people can enjoy a ride. And this ride we are talking about is a global standard. Even a lot of people since the launch of this vehicle have been getting a lot of uh, reports from our members that they are asking them, is it real? You know, because this is the first time we are seeing that uh, government, uh, government make promise and they are fulfilling it. I thought when, when me saw it, I thought I'm dreaming. But today is reality. You see, if it's been piloted properly, it will fit in what we call smart city Lagos. Because that is no different from what is being practiced in Dubai and what is being practiced in Lagos. The alien service in Lagos State is already a smart way of transportation. Unlike those who promise us smart transport system and we are still seeing car of 15, 17, 18 years, 20 years running a taxi. But we are talking about a recent car, two years old car. To run a taxi business with a fast visited system and with a lot of security gadget, you know, to contain any security threat. And making the movement in the city of Lagos is very easy with the introduction of several mechanisms that will make life easy for Lagosian, for them to imbibe with this scheme. And I think, uh, I don't know how they came about this. But I expect more of these things to come in the later future. I want to really appreciate the office of Governor Sonwulu for this laudable project. It is indeed a welcome development. And we, at Professional e Alien Drivers and Private Owners Association, are solidly behind him. We trust him again. 
and he's a man of his words. I was with him in 2020 when he said he's going to introduce a safe transport system. I, don't, I didn't believe it will come to reality, but I'm seeing it in reality. May God bless him. Second time we are with you fully, in spirit, in physical. <laughs>